Hi, Virgo. Welcome to your January 2018 astral update. It's Rena here. So, Virgo, what is happening? Well, if you're looking for love, I think January is a really great time to find it. And if you're somebody who is happily married, you know, this might be a great uh, creative time because that fifth house also encompasses um, your creative output and also home business. You know, January is a time when we can move forward and the fifth house can be a business that you own. So let me just start at the beginning. On the first or second, depending on where you live, um, there will be a super moon at 11 degrees of Cancer. And for you, this is the 11th house of hopes and wishes. So there's that 1111 portal, if you will. And the 11th house is also the house of friendships too, and group associations. So something is going on with the full moon that either sees you leaving one of these um, particular areas uh, perhaps you end a friendship or maybe there's a, a group of people that you would typically hang out with and you no longer uh, want to do so. It's the beginning of the year. And I have a feeling that if that's the case, Virgo, that there is a lot of internal stuff happening for you where you are changing. You know, we talk about ascension and this, um, how people are feeling that they are spiritually evolving at a very rapid pace. And if you have noticed, and if you feel that way about yourself, you may have noticed that in some of your personal relationships, you just don't have the same affinity for certain people. Doesn't mean that you don't care about them and you don't wish them well, but it can be kind of painful when you feel like you no longer have these, you know, things in common with them as you used to. And so you may be distancing yourself uh, from your um, social circle, or at least some of the people. And this may have even been a resolution that you like, uh, uh, implement right away, because it's like at the very beginning of the year. For some people, this could be a realization of a long held dream because full moons can bring culmination to something and fruition. So that can be actually very exciting. The, the 11th house being the luckiest house where something finally transpires that you've been just um, holding out hope for. On the second of the month, Uranus turns direct at 24 degrees of Aries in your eighth house of other people's money. Now, uh, one thing I want to say about this particular um, stationing direct that Uranus is doing is that now all the planets are direct. And so green light from the universe for the next couple of months, at least in January and February, where there are no retrogrades. And if you wanted to launch something, you can. This particular transit in the eighth house with Uranus here. Um, be careful about handling other people's money because Uranus is a very erratic influence and the eighth house is other people's resources or your resources combined with theirs. And if somebody tries, for instance, to get you to invest in something, because I think even the eighth house, uh, sometimes I see like the fifth house being speculation, like investing, but I could see the eighth house. Um, there could be some, some wild gains and losses, but you know, speaking of wild gains, I mean, you could have you in the next, um, year or so, uh, there's going to be Uranus is going to go into the next sign of Taurus into that ninth house of yours. And this is happening sometime this year, but it's going to retrograde again into Aries and only fully 
go into Taurus in 2019. So it's going to be on and off in that eighth house in 2018. But as it's in that eighth house right now, you, you Virgo could see, you know, out of the blue, some kind of in major inheritance. Um, so it's when something is erratic, we always like get nervous that we're going to lose something. Of course, that's always possible, but there could be a wild gain too. So just, um, keeping you up on that. And of course, Uranus is going direct. So it'll be at least a little bit more stable, but that's not saying much when you're talking about Uranus. Now on the 11th, Mercury goes into Capricorn and this is the trigger to the fifth house of romance. Um, you could be having a conversation. I was going to say conversate, which is not a word, by the way. Um, you could be having a conversation with someone, conversing with someone that is a love interest that you really um, are attracted to starting on the 11th. But for the first 10 days, well, even 11 days of the month, Mercury is in Sagittarius, and this is your fourth house of home and family. So it is possible that you are um, in negotiations for something regarding real estate. And it may have something to do with that eighth house too. There may be some will that is in question and you have to sign documents connected to property. Mercury will be going back up to speed where it was before it retrograded on the 10th in that in one of those last degrees of Sagittarius. So um, that actually would be a great time to sign that document when, when it has gone back up to speed, if it has to do with some kind of property matters. And then on the 31st, Mercury goes into your sixth house of health and work and in, in, in Aquarius and Mercury actually connects with diet as does the sixth house. So you could be kind of like ruminating over a certain or researching a certain diet and you actually ruled the sixth house Virgo. So you're all about that kind of thing. Um, holistic living and, you may be trying, you know, now that it's January, you may be trying to get back on track with the diet or something along those lines. On the 16th, there's going to be a new moon in your fifth house of romance and creativity. And uh, some of you may be really wanting to launch your own business, depending on how much development you've done on it. But you may be at least starting to work on a, on a home business. Maybe you're starting a new love relationship with the person that you have been conversating with, I mean, conversing with. And um, Venus has been in Capricorn for um, half of the month until the 17th. So Venus, goddess of love, self-explanatory, um, crushing on somebody you know, feeling uh, attracted to somebody romantically, talking to them, falling in love. Uh, Venus can be doing artistic work for your business, something along those lines. Venus can bring money where she goes. So Venus in the fifth house can be making money off of a home business or a creative project. And then on the 17th, Venus goes into your sixth house of health and your daily routine, your work schedule, the work itself. And this can also profit you when speaking about anything connected to a workplace, a um, anything in the area of health you may have something or at least harmony is restored. If you've had some kind of um, imbalance, you might find that you're feeling a lot better when Venus goes into your uh, sixth house on the 17th. On the 26th, Mars goes into Sag, and this is your fourth house of home and family. Um, like I stated earlier, you have had um, 
Mercury there for the first 11 days. So maybe you've been um, having conversations with your parents, uh, dealing with that or something connected to a home project. Maybe you've been thinking about plans on some sort of expansion because Mars in the fourth house can actually be home renovations. And um, so you may be doing that towards the end of the month or even having some kind of conflict uh, with your mother or just um, fighting over um, some kind of real estate, maybe something that is uh, in the family with Uranus going direct in the eighth house. That could have been a time when uh, things, you know, little surprises related to a, a will come into your um, awareness. So be careful of Mars in, in the fourth house because you may actually have some sort of um, unpleasant things. You know, uh, conflict doesn't is not going to be usually uh, very pretty. And it may be because you're like concerned about money and that could be kind of petty and ugly. So uh, make sure that it's worth it. Because when, before Mars goes into Sagittarius, it's going to be in Scorpio and that'll be your third house of um, it could be your siblings. And so you might be fighting with m different members of your family. Maybe you feel like they're cheating you out of something and you're like standing your ground. It's possible that you have every right to do it. And even it's something that would be a good spiritual practice, but for other people, it just may be like something you automatically go into because um, you want financial security or something and it's almost like fear-based and 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 it's not necessarily a good thing so it all depends on the individual as with anything in life and then on the last day of the month there is a blue moon lunar eclipse in leo and for you this is your second house of earned income virgo so, oh no, um, I'm sorry. Why did I wrote down that it's the second house? Actually, it's your 12th house. So um, rather than being a money um, transit, this is actually in the, probably the most psychic house of um, the chart. And a lunar eclipse, I mean, what could happen with you? It, uh, a, a lunar eclipse is a very powerful, either f um, it, a very powerful full moon. So full moons can bring a lot of psychic activity. And the 12th house is all about the spiritual realm. So look for your dreams around the end of the month. You could have some kind of revelation um, through either dreams or meditation. Maybe it's just like a spontaneous realization, Virgo, that really connects to your karma because the 12th house is your karmic past. And s things that have kind of held you back. If you have any kind of addictions, this could be a time when you just drop them and there's no, you know, kind of long drawn out process. Um, I, I could see this as a huge a purge for you, um, a break from the past, a break from that which holds you back and allows you to move forward. So um, it could be very powerful for Virgos, this blue moon lunar eclipse at the end of the month. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this, Virgo. If you'd like a private reading, uh, please... Uh, click on the link below to my website, rainamoonastrology.com. Uh, I have all kinds of readings, including a natal chart interpretation, which is kind of like 
uh, sort of like what I'm doing right here. But um, check my website for more descriptions on my different types of readings. And God bless you. Have an awesome January. Bye.